I am honored to invite the next speaker, Chief Superintendent Mirit Ben Mayo from the Israel Police. Advocate Mirit Ben Mayo is the head of communication in Israel Police, worked as a criminal prosecutor for the state for 15 years, holds a master degree in international and public law from Northwestern University, Chicago, and Tel Aviv University. So, um, I should say good morning to everyone or good evening to everyone uh, all over the, uh, the, the globe with uh, Australia, Italy, Italy, uh, Germany, Panama, Sweden, and uh, China, and uh, South Africa. South Africa. South Africa. Um, so, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I uh, started by saying good morning or good uh, evening. But uh, I must say that since the 7th of October, we do not have a, not a good morning, not a good evening. Um, we are um, trying to make it good, and we're doing everything that we can do here in Israel in order to um, go on and uh, try to understand what happened here on the 7th of October. And, uh, and, and when we uh, drill down and uh, think about it, it doesn't matter if we're doing it uh, uh, as a part of the police or as a part of this uh, very important uh, organization of Maccabi or just uh, uh, regular uh, civilians uh, we um, you know we, we, we uh, usually take an, another moment and uh, ask ourselves did this really happen is this really our reality uh, because um, such uh, atrocities, uh, which uh, took place on the 7th of October to our people, are really um, unbelievable. It's not even a, a word that we can use. It's uh, something that is um, uh, not humane, um, uh, unacknowledgeable in, in, uh, doesn't work in all situations. Um, and um, especially the brutality that took place um, towards uh, women and uh, men um, as, uh, in, in the form of sexual um, violence. And sexual violence is a very broad uh, subject because um, it includes uh, not only rape, but also uh, cutting off of uh, genitals and uh, cutting off of uh, different parts of the body uh, as a part of, um, as an act of humiliation, as an act of uh, very, very mean violence. And um, what we have found out starting our investigation, which uh, actually took place, uh, start started to take place on the 7th of October uh, around the afternoon uh, was that nothing was uh, unplanned. Everything was very well planned. And when I say that, uh, I'm saying it as an official um, speaker here uh, on behalf of the Israel police. Uh, we, do, we see, and I will let you know in a few minutes uh, how we see all of this. Um, we see that uh, all the actions were a part of a very uh, specific plan uh, to which the terrorists um, trained for many years. Uh, they knew exactly what they were going to do, where they were going to do it. I don't think that they that they understood or they that they expected that uh, they were doing to so many people, but uh, <clears throat> they definitely planned to do it to as many people as possible um, in different spots. And um, how do we know that? We know that um, because as you know already, they came in simultaneously to 20 different spots, to 20 different places, to 20 different kibbutz, uh, uh, small um, 
uh, cities and um, to the festival area. And they did exactly the same uh, thing in each and every place. They murdered, they cut off uh, body parts, they uh, humiliated men, women, and they uh, sexually abused men and women. Now, the big question is why? We don't know why. The only answer that could be is hatred. Hatred to any human being who is a part of Israel. By the way, they did not care and they did not ask before they raped and before they <coughs> murdered or kidnapped. They didn't ask the people where they're from. They, the fact that they were here in Israel was enough for them to uh, serve that the narrative of hatred. And we know that uh, people were murdered from uh, uh, a lot of countries, more than uh, 42 countries. Uh, some of them uh, are your countries. So were the kidnapped and so were the ones who were raped. Now let's drill down to uh, the sexual violence. How can we get, usually, as, as uh, I was introduced, I'm an, I'm an advocate, I, mean, I was um, working as a prosecutor, criminal prosecutor for many, many years. So um, the um, job of, of uh, looking at evidence, deciding which evidence are, are um, enough for us uh, to indict and which and where we need to investigate more is a part of my life for many, many years. Um, and regarding sexual violence, uh, usually in regular uh, cases, if someone was sexually uh, uh, attacked, either raped or other matters of uh, sexual uh, violence, in one case, we might have the victim herself or himself coming to the police, giving out uh, evidence or testimony regarding uh, what went through, um, giving the name of the attacker. Usually, we would take that uh, uh, woman, for example, uh, to the hospital. We will uh, um, use the rape kit and uh, collect uh, whichever evidence uh, from her body. And this would uh, add up to her testimony and to the investigation of the attacker. And uh, then we would indict. Here, the Hamas did all they could do to uh, leave almost no um, victims alive. What they did, and we know it from eyewitnesses, we know it from uh, first uh, uh, arrivals, uh, we know it from uh, the visuals that uh, they took, the, the Hamas themselves, they um, filmed while they were doing their actions, while they were going into uh, those 20 different places, they were going in with their live view and filmed everything. So we have right now the police over 200,000 visuals that we're uh, watching and collecting evidence from these visuals. But we hardly have any victims, uh, any survivors who would come and tell us because most of them were murdered. And the ones that we know are still with us are right now still getting their therapy and we are waiting for them to come and tell us when they will be strong enough mentally, physically <coughs> to come and tell us. 
up until now, we do have evidence from maybe some of you uh, show uh, saw uh, from uh, uh, some eyewitnesses. One of them we showed um, her testimony or part of her testimony um, in the UN. We usually don't do that, by the way. We do not reveal evidence before we indict. We are very, very um, stiff with that. We, uh, um, we, we, we do not speak about evidence before we indict. We, we, you know, we respect the ongoing um, investigation. And then only afterwards, after we indict, or maybe after, and even sometimes only at the end of the, of the um, legal uh, procedure, only then, we reveal evidence, but here, as Kochav said before, and as my friend here only said, the world did not say a word. Women organizations were quiet. Those who uh, get so much money and donations from many countries during the years in order to speak up and be there for the women and for the countries who uh, overcome such atrocities, they were quiet. They did not say a word. And this is why in the UN, we uh, we revealed a glimpse of the testimony of the eyewitness who told the world how she <coughs> was hiding at the party, at the festival, in a certain spot, and she saw with her own eyes how these monsters of the Hamas raped a woman just a few meters from her, from the eyewitness, raped her, passed her from one to another, cut off her breast, went, walked around holding her breast while another one of their friends is raping her, and while he's, and I'm sorry for the description, but you all must hear this and tell your friends and tell other organizations that you're dealing with and tell the press in your country. While he was still raping her, he shot her in her head and murdered her. And only then he left her body. Can you imagine that? We have a testimony from a survivor. Oh, by the way, the one, the, that woman, the one, um, um, the, the eyewitness that I told you about, also came back to the same spot in which she was hiding. With a, uh, she came there uh, with the investigators, the police investigators, and she uh, laid back in the same spot. And she showed them exactly where the rape was. She gave them directions, they walked to the place, and they found, uh, they found um, clothes in that spot, exactly. And the whole picture was completed with that. We have a survivor from the Nova Festival just me watching how much time I have left. Okay. You're fine. We have a survivor from the Nova Festival, another one, who testified. Girls without any clothes on, without tops, without underwear, people cut in half, butchered. There were girls with a broken pelvis due to repetitive rapes. Their legs were spread wide apart in a split. We have a rescuer that arrived to a house in uh, the kibbutz, in one of the kibbutz, and he testified. Inside the shower, there was a body of a cuffed woman. She was without any underwear. The body was in the corner and her hands were tied. We have a police officer testified. 
I could not drive because there was a baby cradle full of blood on the road. A baby that was outside his cradle and a naked woman lying next to the baby body. She was naked, badly injured, bullets in her body. We heard our police officers who worked in Shua. You know, Shua was the place, the base where uh, our uh, all the bodies were uh, brought to uh, for identification. Um, what they saw there, our police officers, um, were bodies, some burnt, some uh, with their genitals cut off, men and women. Some they could not um, identify uh, because there was nothing to, uh, it was very difficult to identify uh, with the situation of bodies. And so I can imagine or I can guess that maybe one of you would ask right now if we have forensic evidence for uh, sexual uh, for sexual uh, violence, if we have uh, forensic evidence like autopsy or something like that. No, we don't. But you know why we don't? We don't because um, we had over one thousand bodies at the identification center. They came out of the war zone in from the 20 different places uh, where they were taken out of there under, under fire. We were in a war zone while trying to collect the bodies still under attack with, uh, uh, with missiles uh, coming up from Gaza up until uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so many bodies, they came, uh, they were brought to, uh, to um, Shua, truck after truck came and handed out uh, uh, the bodies. And uh, eventually, while we uh, got to everybody, it took time, even though our people worked there 24 seven in order to identify. We are all Jews and we know how important it is uh, to uh, do a very a, a correct uh, identification and to bring our uh, our dear ones to uh, to uh, burial as soon as possible. And that was our mission. And even if our mission would have been to take forensic evidence from the bodies, most of them it was not possible to do because of uh, the body situation. But we know, and this will be my last uh, sentence, um, we are working um, still now 24-7 in this uh, huge and very important uh, investigation that we, uh, we uh, this is the most important investigation that we've ever dealt with here in Israel since uh, 1948. Uh, because um, it's uh, on behalf of all of those who were kidnapped and who were murdered and raped and those who have stayed alive but their lives are not the same life since the 7th of October, and who do not have houses to go back to, and do not have families to uh, meet anymore, we will do all possible in order to bring all those terrorists uh, to trial. And, that, and for that, we have our uh, LAHA 433, which is our FBI uh, unit, uh, most of their, uh, the, the investigators 
of that uh, unit, that huge, very, very important unit, are now working only in investigating the terrorists getting uh, their um, uh, getting getting their testimony, uh, getting testimonies from uh, survivors, etc. Um, and we will do everything in order to bring everyone to uh, court. Thank you. Thank you, Milit. Uh, now we have some questions. Uh, how do you as a woman deal with the work in this issue? Uh, that's a good question, and thank you for uh, asking that. Um, it's very, it's very uh, difficult, I must say, as a woman to uh, watch the visuals to uh, even uh, try and imagine what happened there uh, especially in the in the party but not only I know some people who were at the party you know um, I have a son who is 20 years old I have a daughter she's 17 years old um, luckily enough my son um, doesn't like this type of music that was there but some of his friends were there. Uh, but I can just imagine, for example, if my daughter was a little bit older and she would have gone to this uh, place, um, I can't even imagine um, the last, uh, what, would have, what could have happened. And I can't imagine how these young women who uh, only wanted to dance, <laughs> how they ended their lives in this uh, horrific uh, situation. But, and I've seen, I've seen difficult, difficult things in my life. Um, as I said, I was a prosecutor. I dealt with difficult situations. I find it, uh, there's no other way that the world will, uh, will know what happened here, if I will not tell them, myself and our friends here, and uh, more friends and more people that I know. And this is why um, I'm doing all that's possible um, to speak to um, as many people as I can, as many influencers as I can, um, myself and my team, usually what we do is, um, you know, we do news, we do, uh, we, we uh, engage with, uh, with all of the um, press in Israel and also overseas, we uh, uh, do a lot of news with the international press. And now what we're doing is we're telling the world with the press, with, with uh, you can see that we, we did articles with uh, American uh, press, even with the New York Times, we were um, involved with, uh, with a big paper that they wrote. It was very difficult, um, but we have to do it. Because if we will not talk about it, it can happen again to our daughters or to our grandkids. Thank you. Another question. What do you think can be done to help regarding to what you say right now, right now, to resonate such difficult information? Also dealing with young girls. What can we done what can be done uh, by our friends? Do not keep this, do not let this issue go uh, under the um, go to the back backyard if, if I explain myself we have to keep it on the table all the time especially while we still have 136 people women children men elders, still 
there. We have to go on and speak. And you know, even you, if you go and if you do not go to your Congress, okay, or to uh, your president, but you go to schools and you go to um, any, you know, to your friends and talk about it. Keep it in the minds of whoever would 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 like to hear, and also the ones who do not want to hear. You know, um, for example, um, for us, for myself, and for my my friends and uh, and uh, my team, and also the Israel. Um, um, all the officials in Israel that we that do um, uh, what we're doing right now, um, we uh, especially speak with the ones who do not want to hear. For example, when uh, press, um, I can give for example, um, like uh, I don't know. I don't want to uh, say names, okay? But uh, press who usually, press members who usually are against Israel, and they asked us questions. We told them, let's meet and speak. Usually I would not want to speak to them. I can even say no comment or something like that. But, but now, we met with many of them, and did everything in order to get them into the understanding of what happened here. And with most of them, you will be surprised it works because after all, when you know how to speak to those people and you talk to them eye to eye and go and talk to their hearts, eventually you can, uh, gain their trust and make sure that they know what happened. And as you know, um, we have a visit uh, from one of the UN members and uh, she's coming here. You know why? Because our uh, ambassador to the UN uh, and the members who came and spoke they didn't let this subject uh, off the table. They made sure that it will be news, that it, it, that it will be on the table, and she's coming. And we will show her exactly what happened here. We will take her to all the places. Okay. As a prosecutor with a systematic method, and although we have little evidence, can we not still claim a systematic crime against humanity? That's the first, like, and there is an addition. How is the Israeli police acting to, uh, to convict the terrorists that uh, took part in the, these acts of sexual terrorists? Okay, so um, as I said, LAHA 43, which is our like, FBI, there are uh, all in, they're, what they're doing is uh, they uh, took the whole their whole uh, big unit and uh, they divided it um, into subunits. And then each unit is uh, investigating it's, uh, according to uh, areas, but like uh, uh, one unit investigates the crime that took place in uh, Beirut, for example, in, in, in two or three kibbutz, kibbutzim, kibbutzis. And um, then they collect all the evidence regarding these kibbutz, okay? And then the other unit takes other kibbutzim, et cetera, et cetera. They work as groups. Um, to these investigators um, who are dealing with forensics, with, uh, with the terrorists themselves, with the uh, eyewitnesses, with the um, survivors, et cetera, um, we have... Uh, prosecutors 
who are a part of their teams. They are working each uh, um, team of prosecutors. They work um, with the team of investigators. And um, while the, the collection of evidence is being done, the prosecutors are um, with them and they're giving them le legal advice uh, uh, during the, uh, in the evidence collection in order to um, face a good evidential uh, picture for the indictment. Uh, so it's very, um, it's very organized, but it's very difficult because we have, as I said, so many um, sources uh, uh, in, to check and to collect in, and to make sure that we have the right uh, visual with the right uh, area and with the right um, terrorist. Um, and it's, it's difficult to match them all up. And, and this is why the, the other question that I was asked here is a very uh, important one. Can we do, uh, can we um, uh, indict uh, collectively? And uh, in the Israeli law, it's possible. It's definitely possible. And uh, I know that uh, um, there is an intention uh, to, um, to regard some of the um, uh, atrocities to all of the people. For example, um, uh, the, the, the planning of this uh, crime uh, and uh, the breaking in and the violence. I know that for up until now, the plan is um, to uh, indict um, a general uh, indictment for some of the um, atrocities. Regarding others, it is still a legal uh, question how it is going to be, how they will be uh, brought to court. Um, and um, as it, it's a it's a legal um, uh, matter that is dealt now uh, and led by the um, general general attorney of Israel uh, with the general um, uh, prosecution, and uh, they will come up and eventually decide how exactly it is going to be. It maybe it, it will even be. Uh, necessary to uh, legislate specific uh, legislation for uh, this uh, event. Um, but we, we still do not have uh, a, um, a decision regarding that, but it's on uh, it's, an, it's ongoing and it's uh, dealt with by the head of prosecution uh, of Israel. Thank you, Merit. And last question. Okay, we have a a little bit delay with the with the third uh, the third uh, speaker, so I'm I'm taking the advantage to ask you one more and last. Uh, through the terrorist investigation, did any of them admit the sexual terrorism that took place by them or fellow terrorists? I think that was uh, was there. Yes, there was. Um, um, I cannot speak a lot about uh, their investigations. I can say that. Uh, I can say that they are um, um, saying that yes, they came with specific instructions, uh, and I will quote, to dirty them. <laughs> and with the, when uh, they were asked, what do you mean to dirty them? Direct them. This is what we were instructed to do. Uh, they are some of them uh, telling uh, uh, parts, um, they're, they're talking about actions of their themselves or some of the other ones um, in regarding of um, sexual violence. And I cannot elaborate uh, more regarding that at the moment, uh, but make sure, I, I will tell you that you should be sure that we have uh, the best investigators from the Israeli police and the uh, Secret Service and uh, the IDF, uh, because it's a mutual 
investigation, national investigation, and um, we will bring them to court. We will bring the justice. Thank you very much. <laughs>